periodic trends in atomic properties. These are properties that vary in a systematic way according to an element's position on the periodic table. This step-shaped line here divides the metals from the nonmetals. Everything to the left of the step-shaped line is green, that's a metal, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a nonmetal, and it is to the left of the steps. Everything to the right is a nonmetal, the elements in purple. And then, elements that have properties of both metals and nonmetals are the metalloids in pink. And notice, those elements in pink exist adjacent to the step shape line. The properties of metals and the properties of nonmetals are very different. For instance, metals are shiny, nonmetals are the opposite of shiny. Metalloids can have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Many metalloids are shiny. So a property that metalloids share with metals is shininess. On the other hand, metals are malleable, meaning they can be bent into different shapes without breaking. Nonmetals break. Metalloids tend to break. So they have some properties of nonmetals as well. You can think of the distance between the nucleus of an atom and its outermost electron to be the atomic radius, which we will abbreviate AR. This diagram on the left shows the relative atomic radii of the main group elements. The first two columns are groups 1 and 2, the S block. And then the rest of it are groups 13 through 18, the P block. The radii of the elements actually decreases as you move from the left to the right. This should be counterintuitive. Consider lithium versus beryllium. Lithium has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s1 for a total of three electrons. Beryllium is 1s2, 2s2 for a total of four electrons, and yet beryllium is slightly smaller than lithium. If you go to boron, we're at 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, that's five electrons, and it's smaller than beryllium and lithium. By the time you've gotten over to neon, That's the smallest in the second row, and yet the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, eight electrons. How is it that as the number of electrons goes up, the size of the atom can decrease? Now consider the difference between lithium and sodium. Sodium here clearly has a larger atomic radius than lithium, and its electron configuration has 11 electrons instead of 3, so 8 more. It makes sense that it would be bigger since it has more electrons. This is how I remember the trend in atomic radius. It gets bigger as you go to the left and as you go down. Now, the reason atomic radius gets bigger as you go down is because the n value is increasing. And the reason it gets bigger as you go to the left
is because there were fewer electrons, excuse me, fewer protons in the nucleus. And so the amount of charge that the valence electron sees decreases. Let's dig into that Z decreasing a little bit. Consider lithium. It has a Z value of 3. That's 3 protons in the nucleus. So its nucleus will have a charge of 3 plus, as shown here. So it puts a small amount of force on the valence electron, pulling it inward a short amount, and this gives you a relatively large atomic radius. Neon, on the other hand, has an atomic number of 10. That means your nucleus has a charge of 10 plus. That means that the valence electron is pulled in much more tightly and your atomic radius is much smaller.